everybody and welcome to another comics centered graphic novel visual storytelling loving sort of episode of words images and worlds delighted on this episode to be joined by author artist creator graham annabel graham thank you for jumping in and talking with me for a few minutes on a saturday morning i think we're both still having our coffee <laughs> yeah we're both still sort of waking up but I'm glad to be here Glad to have you. Glad to have you. Of course, I, I knew you first for Peter and Ernesto, mm. um, and always on the lookout for graphic novels, uh, you know, as a teacher, as a reader that I can enjoy, but that I can also share with a wide range of audiences. So really appreciate your work there. And we'll also talk about your newer book. It's getting to be almost October. So Eerie Tales from the School of Screams. Um, so looking forward to talking about that book as well, but before we get around to that, just curious about what it was that drew you to authoring, creating, and the world of comics. Um, I'm sure it's a familiar story. It's just, uh, I was always, I was always drawn to drawing, uh, at early age, just constantly doodling. Um, you know, I was a huge, still am a huge fan of Charles Schultz's Peanuts, Mm -hmm. uh, early days, I always imagined I could maybe be a comic strip artist, and I was very focused on making my own little comic strips. Um, I just really liked the ability to tell stories through drawings, uh, whether it's categorized as comics or not. It's just that that combination of words and visuals has always been something I really, really enjoy working with. Mm -hmm. uh, and... I know that there was a pivotal point in my life where I was just about to graduate high school. And I also really enjoyed science. I was thinking of something in the sciences. I wasn't sure what. But as I looked at all my biology textbooks and things, they were just coded in my doodles. <laughs> <laughs> and nice. I thought, well, maybe art is the more natural path for me. Um, and so I instead shifted gears and... Uh, went to Sheridan College, actually, just outside of Toronto, Ontario, up in Canada, uh, for animation. So I jumped into the world of animation, actually, instead of comics, because I really loved film. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was naive enough at that time to think that, well, animation is just comics plus film pushed together, and I think I'll just do that. Uh, and the three years of college there was a real eye-opener for me in terms of the actual process of animation. I, mm -hmm. I went into that knowing very little um, <laughs> and, and I'm still learning to this day. Um, so yeah, I've just uh, kind of had a career now of uh, doing a lot of comics and doing a lot of uh, animation back and forth all the way through, which is uh, it's been great. Yeah, yeah. Now, I confess I'm not as familiar with your animation background. So any work that you'd like to shout out that people would know and go, oh, that's great. <laughs> uh, well, definitely the piece of work that most people in animation know me for is uh, I co-directed the Box Trolls, which was an animated uh -huh. feature from from Leica. Uh -huh. um, I worked uh, over a decade or so at Leica as a mostly as a storyboard artist, uh, working on Coraline, mm -hmm. Paranorman, and then of course directing on the Box Trolls, and then a little bit on Kubo and a bit on Missing Link. So I've you know that's kind of the stuff people mostly know for my career uh, in animation. But um, during that time, I also created my own animated shorts on the side, mm -hmm. which you can find on YouTube if you type in Grickle you will find my channel and there are over about 80 shorts on there. I've just done a lot over the years that have quietly piled up. <laughs> nice. So nice. there's a lot of people that know me through that and the box trolls. Yeah. Those are probably well, the two, two main things. I'm looking forward to exploring more about that. I have students that are also very interested in animation and I'll also link the YouTube channel. Oh, when great. I share this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, love that connection between film, animation, and comics. I, I was a person growing up who connected films and comics very quickly. Um, so curious, and you might have answered a little bit of this question, but I'll, I'll throw it to you in case you want to add anything as far as what comics as, as a medium, as a form, allows you to do in the stories that you want to tell. Well, you know, again, having 
been lucky enough to sort of jump between the worlds of comic comics and uh, and animation uh i kind of always think of it as like having my cake and getting to eat it too because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as a as a creator as an artist uh i love comics because it is such a solo effort for me like i really am doing the writing drawing all of it coloring even um and i really enjoy that i really i guess uh don't want to come off as a control freak <laughs> but i i do love that you just as a single person you can kind of control all the elements um and really mm -hmm. take mm -hmm. stories down the roads you want to take them um that said uh working in comics for long portions of time you can kind of get into the weeds as a creator and I really love working in animation because it's the opposite. It is very team-based. It's a whole <laughs> army of people you're usually working with. And there is such an energy and uh, elevation for things when you're bouncing stuff off people and you're working together and everybody's got a common goal. And, you you know, you, especially working on an animated feature or a TV show, you, you end up making something that there's no way a single person could have done. It needs mm. that effort of everybody. And... Uh, it's incredibly satisfying. So again, I've been lucky enough to sort of bounce between those two dynamics throughout my career so that when I'm starting to feel a little too alone on the island of comics, I can go back to the mainland of animation and kind of, you know, enjoy working with a lot of people again. And um, yeah, I, I I love those two two things and I sort of need them at different times and, and sort mm -hmm. of bounce between the two. Love it, love it. Well, and as a as an artist, as a creator, it's nice to have those different playing fields. So that if you kind of go, okay, I've done this. I need to recharge. Go over here. So I love that. Yeah, and you end up, you know, you end up learning so much. Obviously, when you're working with other artists all the time, and you pick up other things that you wouldn't have found on your own. And it's great to have time to do a lot of inward introspection and and figure out what makes you tick and the things you gravitate to. But boy, is it ever awesome when you're working with other artists and you're like oh i had no idea you could render something like that or do this or you know you just keep picking up those little pieces that work for you from both sides mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so my next question focuses a little more on the the world of peter and ernesto and some of the work you've done for young readers because that's a series that i uh, if you put an age limit on it, I really don't think there's an age limit. I think it's like a, a birth to elder years kind of book that really anybody can enjoy and dig into either through the words, the images, um, or a combination of both. And so I'm curious about a time that you've interacted with a young reader, maybe uh, through fan mail or a school visit or something like that. And uh, it's been a surprising and positive experience. Well, I you know it's funny. I was thinking about it and it's like, I can't say that I can narrow it down to a single interaction that was like the most, you know, um, mm -hmm. they've all been really great. I've really enjoyed doing the school visits. Uh, again, working in comics and animation up, up until the point of doing the Peter and Ernesto books, I hadn't really done the sort of standard th i guess that's so standard in, in children's literature is that you're expected to go to schools and talk to kids and everything and up to that <laughs> point i the comics works comics work that i had done previous to that was all sort of indie alternative stuff that mm. uh you know was more aimed obviously at adults and things and in animation as well i mean you're just kind of making movies or shows but you don't really go to schools and I don't know, it was a whole new experience for me and i had no idea how amazing that is because mm -hmm. um again i can't think of any really bad ones i've ever had they've all been pretty amazing and the, i guess the thing i always come away from it is that for the peter and ernesto books you know you're i was obviously dealing with younger grades they're the best audience ever like they react to everything fully and mm -hmm. and, and sincerely like there is no they don't have any sort of filters set up yet. You know, they're all still figuring that stuff out. And so when you do something that they like, they really like it. And the crowd reaction to things um, is always just so satisfying and fun uh, and honest, I guess. It's just, it's pure, I guess, with the, with kids at that age. Uh, and 
again, doing comics and animation, you're, you're, you're always sort of working on your own or behind closed doors. Um, and you sort of forget, I guess, how cool it is to be able to draw stuff mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. doing live drawing for those events is always my favorite part because it's always such a reminder of like how much everyone connects to that. And I don't know the weird magic of watching somebody create something from a blank page to suddenly it's there. Uh, I usually in a lot of these events, I usually do like requests from the audience and man, everybody, those kids get so excited when you draw the thing that they suggested and it happens. And <laughs> I don't know the magic of that never gets old. Um, so I've really enjoyed, you know, those kinds of interactions with them uh and yeah and the fan mail i get i've grabbed a few samples of things that i've had over the years for peter and ernesto of like Aww. kids that do full-on like full color stuff and uh i've had so many kids send me like ideas for like further books for peter and ernesto and they've done like, little <laughs> covers and things and th again that 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 also never gets old it's uh, just getting physical items in the mail is always like the best thing on actual letter that you know written in pencil or whatever and colored mm -hmm. up it's just yeah it's amazing and i bet you even archive those i bet you have like a little space oh, got, where yeah i've got my special drawer where i just slide them all in and put them in there and then whenever i'm like <laughs> ah, i'm not feeling it today i'll just kind of pull those out and look at it and it's like oh, yeah absolutely. i think i can do some more <laughs> absolutely i have that as a teacher too all the positive notes all the yeah drawings and all the things yeah i love it love it yeah yeah it's great the inspiration um so you have just recently released tales from the or i'm sorry eerie tales from the school of screams so please tell us how this book has come about it and anything that you'd like to share about it sure um this was a book that i have wanted and needed to do i guess for a long time um uh you know my age puts me firmly in the generation that was uh impacted by stephen king quite mm -hmm. a lot <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh it's funny uh, thinking back like like i don't i was trying to think like why why do i like horror material so much like scary stuff and I feel like I can sort of trace it back to when I was about 11, 10 or 11. I had a group of friends that uh, I guess we didn't recognize it at the time as a, as a book club. But one of my friends sort of led the charge of like he would get a book and he would get the rest of us to read it. And so that we could all talk about it or it was just a communal kind of thing that was just this bond. And that started off well enough. I can't remember exactly some of the books we read, but I think they were more like fantasy books and things. Mm -hmm. And then there was the infamous day where he read Salem's Lot. Yeah. Uh, at, <laughs> and yeah, again, I was at the tender age of about 11 or 12. And he's like, okay, this is the one we're reading this time. And I looked at that cover and it was the, I don't know if you remember, but uh, that version of the paperback had like the sort of, black statue and it had a little drip of blood from the mouth and it was just it looks so scary you know it's like mm -hmm. i'm not doing that i'm not reading <laughs> that book and uh it took a little bit of you know a little bit of gentle peer pressure but i was like all right i'll give it a try because everyone else had decided they were going to follow through and read it um and man that book like like no other book I'd ever read previous grabbed my attention in a way that I just, it never stopped after that. I've read everything by Stephen King after that. And I guess that sort of launched me into the world of, of horror and the Stephen King books led to watching a lot of horror movies like mm -hmm. creep, creep show, all those things laid the foundation, I guess, and the love for, for scary things that uh, led to doing um, eerie tales. Uh, and I started making these short stories, these scary short stories on my own, thinking that I was writing maybe for a more adult audience, uh, but hit a point where I realized that, nope, the kinds of things I write about is still for that 12-year-old that read Salem's Lot. Mm -hmm. And so the tone of it and the sort of places that I go with it made perfect sense for for sort of eight to 12 year olds in terms of a 
sort of gateway book to horror, if you will. I keep I keep describing it as like it's Stephen King for kids. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's a great tagline, great description. Yeah, well, it it, it is truthfully where it kind of came from. Um, and some of the other inspirations along the way, as I was doing these stories, I've uh, embarrassed to say that it's I'm, I'm really late to the game in terms of coming to realize the genius of Edward Gorey. I was always aware of his illustrations, but I never really paid enough attention to that stuff. But in doing this book and trying to solve certain things or create certain moods, I started really getting going down that path and looking at a lot of his art. And I've ended up now just obsessively getting uh, copies of the John Belair's books mm -hmm. uh, over the, and I've been slowly reading my way through all that stuff. And man, that stuff is so good. And I'm like, God. I wish I'd read this. I wish I'd read those books before I read Stephen King Salem's Lot. Much as I love that experience, John Belair's would have nicely prepped me for what Stephen King hit me with. <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, so, in some ways, I'm hoping Eerie Tales works like that for a lot of kids, where you know the the kids that are going to want to pursue further scary things. I'm hoping my book is a great little prepper for for going into those worlds without being too <laughs> too wildly scary that it it's you know it scares them away from it that instant immersion instant immersion yeah 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 love it um so curious is a closing question and we can hit anything that we've missed but places where people can go to connect to um, be in touch with you to read about what you're doing and then anything about your next steps and your creative journey that you'd like to share with us sure uh probably the number one spot to find all things about me would be my website which is just grickle.com because that will link you to animation to books to uh just a lot of random drawings mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. and get a sense of who i am and what i do um, and probably the second best place would be my Instagram feed, which is oddly enough, Grickle14 at Instagram. I, wasn't that there was 14 other Grickles, but 14 was always a favorite number. And I just threw it in there. And this was long before I realized that the the feed would turn into what it turned into. And I've stuck with it ever since. But um, but I do daily drawings there. I, I've been doing, um, it was when the box trolls finished. And I suddenly had time to draw for myself again um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that I created a, an Instagram handle and started just doing a daily doodle there. Uh, and that's kind of turned into, I guess you could call my version of the far side. I'm, I've, I've really leaned into trying to do single panel comic strips all the time. And some are funnier than others, but they're all kind of in the same tone. So that's a that's a great place to go if you want to sort of get, again, a sense of what I do and the kind of tone of my my work. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. And of course, like you mentioned, sorry, the YouTube channel, which mm -hmm. is where you can find all the animated stuff that I do. And again, if you just search for Grickle, you'll find it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, glad to share about your work. I appreciate it as a, as a reader and a teacher and anything that I've missed or anything that's a glimpse of what's to come that you'd like to share. Um. Well, I guess as, as a near in the future event, I'm going to be doing a big book event with John Clausen in oh, Vancouver, nice. in Vancouver on October 16th. Uh, we're going to do a joint thing because as you, I'm sure, you know, John's got a new book called the skull. Mm -hmm. Um, and he and I've been friends for years. We both worked on Coraline together and, uh, we definitely share a similar taste in terms of scary stories. And so, uh, we we're both really excited that, uh, we were able to get this joint event set up. Um, so I'll be doing that. I'll be in Vancouver next month doing, promoting that. Sounds very exciting. Well, Graham, thank you so much for jumping in, talking with me for a few minutes. Glad to share about your work and glad to have you back anytime. Great. Thanks so much, Jason. I really enjoyed it.